franchise um, process. So with that, you know, Mayor, I would defer if you want to allow anybody from the public if they wish to speak, and then we can continue the public hearing. I would just recommend that we state a specific date and time of the continuation so that we don't need to publish notice again. Yeah, as we discussed earlier in the day, we'll, uh, we'll adjourn that, or excuse me, we'll continue that to our next meeting and I'll announce the date and time uh, after we hear comment this evening. So is there anybody in the public that would like to speak on this public hearing? The response is overwhelming, Mayor. Well, sometimes it takes a minute. <laughs> Anybody? Yes. There we go. Mr. Higgins, please go ahead. Hey, we have really uh, lousy service here from Cablevision. That's what I wanted to tell you. Okay. We don't like it too much. Okay. That's all. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, you let I, them know I, for me. I beg your pardon. I didn't hear the last thing you said. Let them know that we, the service is no good. Okay. We, we should have two. And Mr. Higgins, actually, it's, you know, obviously they do want the input. When, when you say the service, are we talking the TV, the internet, both, the internet, everything? The internet, the internet and the TV, okay. both lousy. All right. Lousy. And, and we should have more than one choice. It's not fair to us that we have to put up with this lousy service. Well, that, that has nothing to do with Optimum uh, and their franchise agreement. That has to do with vendors wanting to provide service in the community and that would entail numbers of customers and all of that market research stuff that we have no input on at all so you we can't, can't join with some other community you can't join with some other community to get somebody else in here well it has to do with numbers in specific geographical areas i think but maybe Chris no, and, and infrastructure as well obviously if they're not set they're up to make their to money provide the service yeah we can't twist anybody's arms on anything although I do know that uh, uh, Frontier is laying fiber uh, for future service in the village. So, I don't know and by the way, I should mention, uh, Mayor, this agreement, the franchise is not exclusive. So any other right. franchise E could come in and offer service. Exactly. And we'll touch on I'm, that unless I'm wrong, isn't, unless I'm wrong, isn't this franchise agreement only for video cable? It's not for internet. That's correct. This is cable, cable TV. Yep. Yeah, this has nothing to do with the internet. That is true. No, the it's internet not. is separate. Correct. This is not an internet's not a regulated utility yet. That is correct, Mr. Trustee Graziano. Thanks, Chris, for pointing that out. Matt, did you have anything else before we move on? I'll take that as a no. Okay, anybody else? Oh, they run right. off the same line. It's cable and internet service, both in one package. So no, no, when, my, when my service is lousy on my TV, the internet is lousy too. No, I know. But I'm just that's just how it works. I just let everybody know, Matt, that cable is regulated. Cable has franchise agreements. Basically, it's the wild west for internet providers. There's a bill in the Senate right now for broadband to be bringing under control the New York State PSC. It hasn't been passed yet. Yeah, I think, you know, just in generally speaking in the near future and, you know, not too much time will pass before I think everything is going to be provided over the internet. And if there's regulation, that's where it will be. It looks like it's that way now. Well, yeah, it is provided that way, but it's not regulated that way. Huh. All right. Welcome to New York, Matt. <laughs> We're happy to have you. Okay, anybody else in the public wish to speak on this public hearing? Robin has her hand up. Oh, Robin, please go ahead. I didn't see your hand up. Not used to people using those controls. No, it's not. Never mind. It was my mouse, not her hand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would have been a little surprised to be honest. With you, but that's okay. You know, hey. Maybe Tara has a question. No. <laughs> Anybody else in the public? Last call. Okay. Well, we will uh, continue this public hearing until our next regularly scheduled meeting, which is June twenty fourth at 7.30 p.m., correct, Desiree? You can just nod. Uh, yes, whoops, hang on. Oh, we hear you. Yep, now you're muted. We heard you Sorry, before. Sorry, <laughs> I'm using two different things. Ah, yes. okay, go ahead. I was just gonna suggest that since John Smith's on his cell phone, he may not know how to unmute himself. So I don't know if he had oh. any questions or not. So I think it's star nine, John, if you do wanna say something, you press star nine on your phone. He spoke a minute ago, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, there he when is. He first, okay. When he first came. Yep, go ahead, John. You're it's on. Star, it's star six. Uh, ah, but star I have six. nothing. I have no comments today. I spoke earlier with Mr. Reagan. 
and uh, the issue was clarified as to what the franchise was really about. So, okay, thank you, John. All right. Thank you, John. And by the way, I remembered thank star you. nine is if you want to raise your hand, John. Oh, I can't <laughs> see you anyway. I uh, I don't have any video. Okay. All right. So uh, as I stated a minute ago, we are going to continue this public hearing until our next regularly scheduled meeting on June 24th at 7 30 p.m. John found the raise hand. Ah. Excellent. Yeah. He nice. found it. All right, so uh, I will, like I say, we're in uh, communication right now with the Department of Public Service, so we'll follow up with the board. Um, we're waiting for a response from them to see, you know, we're kind of asking them the best way to move this forward expeditiously because the, the former agreement is going to expire. And so we're asking them to kind of work with us to, to get this done since the service is in place, the facilities are in place, the infrastructure is already there. We're really just looking to change the name from Town of Woodbury to Village of Woodbury. So hopefully they'll work with us on that and we can wrap this up in the near future. Thank you, Brian. Okay. You're welcome, you're welcome to stay on, Brian, or you can leave. It's up to All you. right. Well, thank you. I'll, I'll disappear slowly. Okay. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> for, for thank you, everyone. All right. So uh, next up, we'll have public comment. We have a motion to table. Uh, you're right. Excuse me. Uh, can I please have a motion in a second to uh, continue this public hearing until our next regularly scheduled board meeting on June 24th at 7.30 p.m.? Trustee Giacomazzo with the motion, Trustee Burek with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. Thank you, aye. Desiree. Okay, now moving on to public comment on agenda items only. Does anybody in the public have anything they'd like to say or ask about any of the agenda items? Last call for agenda items. Okay, we'll move on with our regular agenda then. So next up is administrative business. This is the first year, or excuse me, this is the first meeting of our fiscal year. So as usual, we're doing our reorg meeting. Um, so first up on the reorg meeting, I'm gonna be looking for a motion in a second to appoint the following consultants for fiscal year 2021, 2022. Engineers for the village, H2M Architects and Engineering. Attorney for the village, Burke, Mealy, Golden and Norton. Ferrick, Lynch, McCartney and Nugent. Uh, planner for the, oh, oh, there's more, Cornfield, Rue, Newman, and Simone. Planner for the Village, Nelson, Pope, and Voorhees. And attorney for the ZBA, Burke, Mealy, Golden, and Norton. I'll make the motion. Okay, Trustee Burek with the motion, Trustee Graziano with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. Thank you. Need a motion and a second to authorize H2M Architects and Engineering as the engineer for the village to file applications to all regulatory agencies as required on behalf of the village of Woodbury in fiscal year 2021 2022 for those projects authorized by the village board. Trustee Giacomazza with the motion. Trustee Gomez with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. How about aye? I appoint Andrew Giacomazza as deputy mayor. Moving on to membership. No, no, I don't need a motion for that. Okay. Excuse me? I said, okay. Okay. <laughs> membership and state association. So I'm asking for a motion in a second to authorize the village clerk to enroll the village as members with the New York State Conference of Mayors, otherwise known as NICOM, the Orange County Association of Towns, Villages and Cities, and the Orange County Municipal Planning Federation as well as the Orange County Water Authority, otherwise known as MUDNA, and finally the Woodbury Chamber of Commerce. I'll make the motion. Trustee Graziano with the motion. I'll second. Trustee Burek with the second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Designation of official newspaper. Looking for a motion and a second to designate the Times Herald record as the official newspaper for the village. I'll make that motion. Trustee Giacomazza with the motion. I'll second. Trustee Burek with the second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye. Thank you. Investment policy designation of depository audited of abstract vouchers. So I'm looking for a motion and a second to adopt the investment policy of the village of Woodbury as presented by the village clerk. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Trustee Burek. Trustee Gomez with the second. Or was that the Spock signal? What was that? <laughs> Any, 
Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. You did it again. <laughs> it's bad habit. <laughs> Looking for a motion in a second to reimburse members of the village government and its employees when on official business or duty for the village, the rate established annually by the Internal Revenue Service for the use of their personal vehicle, including gas, wear, and tear. Vouchers are to be completed and filed with the village treasurer before reimbursement is made. Trustee Giacomazza with the motion. I'll second. Thank you, Trustee Burek with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Thank you. Need a motion and a second to reimburse employees not more than $50 per day for food purchased while attending a board approved conference or meeting that is held for an entire day and is for village related issues if not included in the registration cost. Alcohol will not be reimbursed and complete receipts must be submitted with the voucher. I'll make the motion. Trustee Graziano with the motion. Second. Trustee Burek with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? <coughs> Excuse me. Aye. 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 I vote aye. Okay, now we have board liaisons and appointed positions. So I'm looking for a motion and a second to establish the following liaisons of the village board. Liaison to the town board, Mayor Egan, Trustee Giacomazzo. Liaison to the planning board, Trustee Graziano and Trustee Gomez. Liaison to, liaison to the zoning board of appeals, Trustee Giacomazzo and Trustee Burek. Liaison to the fire department, Mayor Egan and Trustee Gomez. Liaison to the water sewer department, Mayor Egan, Trustee Graziano. Liaison to the building department, Mayor Egan, Trustee Burek. Liaison to the highway department, Mayor Egan, Trustee Giacomazzo. Employee liaisons, Mayor Egan, Trustee Giacomazza, and insurance liaisons, Trustee Burek and Trustee Gomez. I'll make that motion. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Trustee Giacomazza, for the motion. I'll take Trustee Burek with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Now I'm looking for a motion and a second to appoint the following individuals to the following positions. Appeals Officer for FOILS, Timothy Egan. Procurement Officer, Timothy Egan. Fire Police, George Sewitt, Dennis Tenney, Christopher Salvo, and Charles Newth. Planning Board Chairperson, Christopher Gerber, and Zoning Board of Appeals Chairperson, Karen Unger. I'll make the motion. Trustee Gomez with the motion. Second. Trustee Graziano with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Thank you. If it does. Okay. Meeting dates and meeting public comment procedures. So I'm looking for a motion and a second to adopt the meeting procedures as presented by the village clerk. I make the motion. Okay, Trustee Burek with the motion, Trustee Giacomazza with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Looking for a motion and a second to adopt the presented procedure to be followed during all public comment segments of the meeting, of the meetings. Thank you, motion. Trustee Graziano with the motion, second. Trustee Gomez with the second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I would aye. Procurement policy. Looking for a motion and a second to adopt the procurement policy as presented by the village clerk. I'll make the motion. Trustee Burek with the motion. Second. Trustee Gomez with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next up, fee schedule. Looking for a motion and a second to adopt the 2021-2022 fee schedule. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Trustee Giacomazzo. Second. Second. Trustee oh. Graziano with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, so that concludes the uh, um, reorg, correct, as I didn't miss anything? Good. Okay, very good. Let's so move on to administrative business, acceptance of minutes. Looking for a motion and a second to accept receipt of the minutes of the meeting held May 27th, 2021. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Trustee Burek. Trustee Giacomazzo with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Approval of abstract. Looking for a motion and a second to approve abstract one containing vouchers 
210001 through 210072, totaling $1,068,106.88. I'll make the motion. Trustee Gomez with the motion. I'll second. Trustee Graziano with the second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye. We're going to table the appointment of building inspector this evening and move on uh, to two extra items. So first is a fire department membership request, looking for a motion and a second to approve the following individuals as members of the Highland Mills Fire Company. Francis Corsello, uh, Fatan Aligi, pending physical, and Scott Sheehan. Oh, I'll make the motion. Thank you, Trustee Graziano with the motion, Trustee Burek with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I don't see anybody other than us that's unmuted right now. That's weird. Uh, second extra item, uh, we have a revitalization committee resignation. So I'm looking for a motion and a second to accept with regrets the resignation of Sandy Capriglioni from the revitalization committee effective immediately. Uh, it was Land Preservation Committee, Tim. Uh, my apologies. So I will redo that. Where's that coming from? That's John Smith. Got it. Okay. Looking for a motion and a second to accept it with regrets the resignation of Sandy Capriglioni from the Land Preservation Committee effective immediately. The motion. Trustee Gomez with the motion. I'll second it. Trustee Giacomazza with the second. I had revitalization on my head earlier in the day. I apologize. It's okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. How about I? Thank you for your service to that committee, Sandy. We appreciate it. Invaluable. Very much so. Um, there is no old business to discuss, so we will move on to new business. Uh, the only new business we have this evening is introductory local law nine cannabis opt out. So we have several motions that we need to do. Looking for a motion and a second to introduce introductory local law nine of 2021, which pursuant to cannabis law section 131 will cause the village of Woodbury to opt out of licensing and establishing retail cannabis dispensaries and on-site cannabis consumption establishments within the village of Woodbury. Thank you, motion. Thank you Trustee no, Graziano, okay. Trustee Burek with the second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next up, we need a motion and a second to declare the Village of Woodbury Board of Trustees as lead agency under SECA for this issue. I'll make that motion. Trustee Giacomazza with the motion. Second. Trustee Gomez with the second. Thank you. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 But I, we got a quick draw Gomez there. <laughs> Next, I'm looking for a motion and a second to type this action as a type two under SECA. Make the motion. Trustee Graziano with the motion. <laughs> Trustee Burek with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. I would aye. And lastly, need a motion and a second to schedule a public hearing to be held at 7.30 p.m. on June 24th, 2021 to entertain public comments on introductory local law 9 of 2021. I'll make that motion. Trustee no, Giacomazzo with the motion. Trustee Burek with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Yeah, I think that's the quickest reorg we ever did. Um, so that concludes regular business. So now we can move out to public comment. Does anybody in the public have anything they'd like to say at all? Hi, uh, yes, I'd like to make a comment if possible. Rachel Bruce, welcome. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much, Mayor Egan. Um, I just wanted to issue a quick um, comment regarding the, the most uh, measure that was just passed by the board a few minutes ago regarding cannabis, um, the sale of cannabis and licensing within the village of Woodbury. While I understand um, some of the sentiments against this measure, I do think that this would have been a profound opportunity for real economic development um, and sales tax revenue within the village. And I hope that the board reconsiders it at some point in the future. Well, all we did, Rachel, was introduce a local law. We have not even had the public hearing on this yet, so you'd be more than welcome to make your comments known during the public hearing on the 24th, and uh, you and anybody else that wishes to speak either in favor or against that proposed local law is welcome to do so. So thank you. Okay, of course. Sorry, I misunderstood. Thank not you so at all. We're just introducing the local law this evening. That's all we did. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anybody else in the public? Anyone at all? 
John, I think John Smith's got his hand up, or is that from like he had his hand up all the time? Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to speak. Go ahead, Matt. So Mr. Higgins for the record. I I understood that this was going to get it. You were going to talk about the water, so I had some uh, things I'd like to say. Uh, first of all, <coughs> I, I highly recommend all board members in our water department read the Paul Heisek 8-17-2014, uh, the most comprehensive Woodbury Creek Valley Fill Aquifer System Report. It's all about our aquifer, and it should be looked at. It's notable in the first sentence that it mentions um, fault controlled in the first sentence of the abstract. And um, transparency and citizen participation is very important. We're all stakeholders and should be involved in any decisions you are considering. We should all be completely informed and many of us have much knowledge to share. We, we, we've had a water shortage for years. Have you thought about filing jointly with other municipalities for sole source de designation from the current primary source designation? That would help to bring some light to the situation that we're having if you were to file for that rather than the primary source that we are now. Well, have you, have you I'll answer that question. Uh, I can tell you that we're working with our consultants uh, and we're, this has been a, a work in progress for many years, as I'm sure you know, Matt, being in the, in the village for years and paying close attention to this. Uh, we're not gonna get into all of that right now, but I can tell you that I have some comments with regard to water and I'm sure Trustee Graziano does as well. Maybe the other board members, but Trustee well, Graziano is an expert in water and sewer. And uh, well, the, sure. the, idea, the idea of <clears throat> filing for a sole source application is sound. It will bring attention to this. And what this village needs to do is start drumming up some kind of, you know, uh, support for protecting our resources here. That's what I'm getting at. Now, both trout brook wells failed due to sediment encroachment. And I wanted to see which, you know, which one was the, which one failed now, because it appears it was, again, due to sediment. Well, no wells failed, Matt. One of the wells is being rehabbed and it had to get, they had to get some sediment out from underneath. Uh, and now that well's back in service pumping. Well, it was due to sediment, wasn't it? Excuse me? It was due to sediment that it was shut down. No, it was shut down for, for preventative maintenance as a, on a scheduled basis. It wasn't shut down due to sediment. It was extended for about a week and a half to two weeks because of sediment that they found after they pulled the well, but that problem well, cleared up and well, it's probably better than it was before. You're mincing words with that, but that's okay. I'm mincing words with that? Okay. Yes. The two Troutbrook wells failed due to sediment. It's They're all fine now, aren't they? Yeah, those are different wells that I'm th than the one that was just down. For me. All right, which one was down? I believe it was well number two. Was it the one by Palaya? No. Yeah. No. Down behind the shop. Behind what? Behind the shop? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I I uh, I did notice in April a letter of support went out for an application for a critical environmental area, but there is no information on it. The citizen should be involved fully with any application to decide what's best. It's long overdue, it's a long overdue idea to designate a critical environmental area to protect our resources here. But the citizen should be involved fully with any application to decide what's best. It's long overdue idea that deserves citizens of involvement and I hope and it's to protect the aquifer to the north. Well, was an application filed? Uh, I'm not gonna get into all of these specifics in the back and forth. This is just public comment, Matt. I'd be happy to sit down and have you meet with myself and Mickey or myself and the engineer or everybody. And no, it's a matter of if it was filed or not. Simple question. I don't have the engineers uh, handy. Mickey, do you have that information? I know Mickey's on. 
you know, it's, it's a matter of filling out a form. Well, I'm asking the water superintendent. Mickey? All right, we'll get that information for you, Matt. Does he have anything else? Yes. Um, you all know how much water is permitted to be withdrawn in the village. Yes, we do. Two years ago, I sent the board a water withdrawal report for 2018, 2019 for a combined 1.2 million gallons water withdrawal out of a local village, uh, of, out of village locale. You're talking about the quarry. Right, recently a 100 foot lift was proposed. Do any of you know if it was approved? I was wondering if it was or not. I believe it was only for 50 feet that they, that they were able to do, I'm not sure. I can tell you, I know that Kelly is on, and I think we just got some correspondence that not mm. all of us may have even looked at yet, but I can tell you that we've been going back and forth with the DEC, uh, our engineers and their engineers, or uh, not their engineers, but the DEC's lawyers rather, uh, with regard to that permit. And there was application deficiencies. Uh, Kelly may have some additional information on that. I know she's on, I'm looking for her name. Hey. Sorry, had to find the uh, and unmute I, and I had to find you button <laughs> while, while driving. Um, yeah, we're, we were still going back. There were some deficiencies, and I know that there was another um, correspondence somewhat recently. I don't recall um, all of the information and everything that was said, so I would have to I would have to get back to you on that so that I could look at it since I'm not currently seated. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So. Um, the entity was recently advertised as having a UCC Chapter 9 auction in late May this year. Not sure if you knew that. Um, the timing is at best strange. Okay, anything else? No, just so you know, for the record there, that uh, UCC... I, I did not know, so... So thank you for passing that on. Yeah, UCC chapter nine. And, and to, to, to get a, a lift uh, for whatever it is, 50 or 100 foot, I think um, under those circumstances, that's strange. Anything else, Matt? No. Nope. Okay, before we go out to any other members of the public, there was something that uh, we should have done that we didn't do. And I'm going to go back to that. I checked with Desiree. She said it was appropriate and okay for us to do that. And that's the hydrogeologist that we wanted to hire. Well, thank you, Chris. You could have sent me a message. <laughs> uh, it was not in uh, uh, our notes at all. And uh, that was a last minute agenda item that we that I wanted to make. Um, so I'm looking for a motion in a second to hire uh, the hydrogeologist Solutions, Inc., for a cost of $31,110 to assess our water system. Thank Amen, you. yes, motion. <laughs> Trustee Gomez is gonna beat you on that, but I'll take the second from you, Chris. Any discussion on that? Just recall, that was a last minute item that wasn't in the part of the regular agenda that we prepared last week. So that's why it was missed. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye, but aye. thank you. Okay, so let me go back to uh, public comment. Any other members of the public have anything? Hello, Mayor. All right, Brandon Kalori, go ahead. Just wanted to remind everybody about the uh, First Responders Day on Saturday, June 12th. Uh, the 5K is in the morning. Uh, registration starts at 8 o'clock. The 5K starts at 9. You can walk, run, crawl, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's all for a good cause for the uh, food pantry. 100% of the proceeds go to the food pantry. And then we'll have the first responders day. It's going to be a good time. So we're hoping to have everybody come out, relax, enjoy the day, and, um, you know, give thanks to those that serve us. Thank you, Brandon. Anything else? No, that'll be all, Mayor. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? <clears throat> Okay, and again, I apologize for missing that earlier. We had the agenda prepared last week, and that was an item that was added in the past couple of days. So, all right, moving on, board member comment and department head comment. Uh, so I'll go first. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to congratulate 
Former Woodbury resident Marty Riley on being promoted the chief of police at the Town of Alpha Police Department last night. Chief Riley grew up in Woodbury and began his police career with the Town of Woodbury Police Department in January of 1985. I've known Marty personally for over 30 years since he was a patrol sergeant, and Ramapo couldn't have selected a better police officer to lead their department. They're in great hands with Marty at the helm, and I want to say again, congratulations to Marty and his entire family. So now a little bit about water, and I'm sure Chris will have some additional comments. Uh, our water supply situation is much improved since the last meeting. Uh, all wells are functioning normally and the tanks are staying filled. However, they're staying filled because of the current outside water restrictions that we have. As a reminder, you can only water outside between 7 and 9 p.m. Uh, we're getting ready to pull another low performing well offline for a scheduled rehab in a couple of weeks. That particular well is pumping very little water right now, so it should have minimal impact on the water system. Uh, the goal of these rehabs overall is to increase performance and get more water out of our existing well supplies. We're also moving along nicely with the new well project. We're awaiting some final components to arrive before continuing, and the new well should be online by the end of the year. With the, re with the well rehabs and the new well that we're putting in, we should have several hundred gallons per minute added to our supply by the end of the year. Uh, for many years, the Village Board has planned new infrastructure, including roads, wells, and sewer. The current well project has been in the works for quite a while, and we were able to accelerate this project by redesignating money, formerly in an escrow account from the Woodbury Common. In cooperation with General Manager Dave Mastretta, we were able to move 250000 from that escrow account to help pay for the new well, and that indeed got us started uh, several months earlier than we anticipated. We also received $736,701.50 on May 20th from the American Rescue Plan. This federal money will help cover the balance of the current well project as well as, and with the second equal payment due, due next year on the same date, we'll have the vast majority of the money needed for yet another well. So this federal money is allowing us to continue improving our water system without raising taxes. Um, I'll let Chris comment uh, on, on additional water issues, but lastly, don't forget, as Brandon said, this Saturday is the first annual First Responders Day at Earl Reservoir from 11 to five, and they have the 5K early in the morning, although I am not a runner. Uh, let us uh, join us rather in honoring our community first responders from the police department, fire department, and the Woodbury community ambulance. Thank you, everybody, and have a wonderful weekend. So why don't we go right out to Trustee Graziano? All right, I hope everybody brought a snack. I might be a little warm <laughs> today. Um, perhaps some beverages. Um, I'll start with the short thing first. Um, but I'm looking forward to, and I'm hoping that we can start doing. Um, you know, may not everybody agree with me, but I want to start getting back into in-person meetings and seeing our constituents in person and doing meetings back in Village Hall again. So I'm hoping that with the, you know, release of the restrictions, um, you know, the governor said the other day, once we had 70% single first shot vaccination rate, he's going to remove all restrictions from all businesses and everywhere. And we're, we are predicted to hit that within the next three to four days. We're at 69.1%. So I'm looking forward to getting back. Can I interrupt you for just one second? I, I, spoke, I spoke to Desiree and Kelly about that very issue uh, of just a couple of days ago uh, because we had posted the public notice for the public hearing on the 24th. And my question was, can we go back to in-person if we wanted to for that meeting? And the answer is yes. So uh, I was actually anticipating and projecting that we'll go back uh, for our next meeting. It's entirely possible. So I agree with you. Sorry, please go ahead. All right, so that was just the one thing. Now. I'm going to get into the status of the water, and it's going to be long. And I'm going to try to say, try to give everybody as much information as I possibly can. Um, you know, I believe I'm a firm believer in transparency, um, so I'm going to give you as much information as I can. But I'm going to give you this with a caveat before I even start. Water infrastructure and specific components of water infrastructure are protected for security reasons. You need to protect the integrity and security of the water system, so we cannot give out those that data to anyone. So remember, that's under ISAC and, and everything else, that's protected. So just keep that in mind as we go through this. But if you want to start talking about the status of supply and we had this latest um, issue and we put water restrictions in place, plain and simple, we need more supply. Regardless of what we're doing now, we need more supply on top of that. We don't have the supply we need to, for what we want to do. That's just the honest and, and, and bold truth at the moment. Um, you know, most people move to an area such as this because they want lawns, they want trees, they want to have gardens, they want to plant things. They don't want to endure water restrictions when the weather gets hot and dry, they just don't. We as a board understand that and we're working to improve things quickly as possible. Now, some of the things people have to understand, I've seen some misinformation out there is Woodbury doesn't own water. 
No one owns, quote unquote, the water. Water's ball, water's owned by the state of New York, in the state of New York. It's all waters of the state. And anybody who wants to get water and pump over 100,000 ga 100, gallons a day must be permitted through the state in the New York State DEC. Now, people think oh, 100,000 gallons a day sounds like a lot of water. It's not. It's about 70 gallons a minute. That's not a very large well. So anything above that has to be permitted by the state of New York. And there's no water owned by any municipality, any private company, anybody other than state. So when people say you're stealing Woodbury's water, or I see comments out there, you're taking Woodbury, there's no such thing as Woodbury's water. It's water. So let's get that. I want to get that out of the way. Now, as far as supply planning goes, some of the things that we've done, and you have to understand that we came into office about a little over a year and a half ago, and we've had to deal with a pandemic um, in the middle of all this. So it's kind of slowed things down a little bit, but now we're getting rolling again. But some of the things that we're putting in place is we've asked for a master plan study to drive to look at and drive investment. That is that is kind of given us a background of what the system is, what the condition it's in, and what we need to do to move forward to improve those systems for both water and sewer. The next thing, as Tim just mentioned, and we did and and um, we voted on is we hired a hydrogeologist. Now that's very very important. That's something I've wanted to do for at least a year now, as, since I first got into office because we need to assess the health of the aquifer. I get it that Heise wrote the report and he's a very, and Paul's a very respected man in the industry and he's done reports for Rockland County aquifers and everything else as well. However, we need to get a, a hydrogeologist on board to do our own study of our own aquifer, the condition of our wells, where we need to go and what we can and cannot do with the current supply. So that's very important and that's something that we got on board now. So that's, that's really, really good what we're doing. So I'm gonna say, you know, I looked to have all these things done and some of this stuff should have been done a decade ago. You know, master planning and stuff to get to where we are today should have been done over the last 10 years. But we're starting now, we're getting it done and we're going to have it done as quickly as possible. I also want to make sure that we provide our water department with all the tools necessary to operate efficiently and productively. And that's one of the things I want to make sure everybody out there understands as well is that Mickey and his team are doing everything humanly possible to keep the system up and running and doing what it needs to do with the tools they've been provided with. And I want to give them you know, a, a shout out for that because they are doing a wonderful job of what they have. We've put in the budget this year for a planned set of well rehabilitation program to make sure going forward that they're scheduled and they're done and you get a few done a year. Make sure you rehab your wells and get them in, in better shape. Um, you know, one of the things I'm, you know, we have to be careful of is how we operate the system and how close we get to the edge of where we need to be, especially during peak demand season like this. And I'm not going to sugarcoat this. We're operating at the hairy edge, especially during peak and hot demand weathers. And, you know, there's things that we have to take into account besides providing water for people to put on their lawns. And one of that is fire protection. And you want to make sure you have water in your tanks and not run them down too low to have the proper fire protection for your, your whole community. So that's something that you have to take into account, not only the, the daily demands of what people use and what they want to put on their grass or, or water their bushes, but what happens if you have a fire. So those are the things that we have to take into consideration as well when we're looking at our water supply. So there's a lot to do, and there's a lot of things that we need to do. And as Tim mentioned, we've gotten some grants, we've gotten some funding. There's a lot more funding out there. Um, there's the Water Resource Fund also that gets you low interest loans and, and whatnot that so we can take advantage of. And then thank you, Desiree, for, you know, you worked on that grant writer and we're getting some good, good grants and whatnot. So we're working on that to try and keep the cost low. But I'm going to tell you this, what we're doing and what we need to do is not cheap and it's going to increase water rates. And I think that's the next step we're going to have to take in this process once we get past the hydrogeologist's report that they go with the other reports we already have. You know, if you take the whole geographical region, Rockland, Orange, into Westchester County, Woodbury is probably the lowest water rate among the providers in that region. We pay the lowest amount of water, and I, our rates are too low. I mean, if you take um, where Jesus lives, and that's not in Woodbury water, you take my bill, I, I pay $40 for a four-month period of water. They're paying $2,000 a year, and they're not on Woodbury water. That's, that's a huge difference. And, and what the water rates are. And the water rates are what drives what you can do in, in most of your investment in the system. So we're gonna need to create more revenue. 
you know, the rates have been stable for about a decade now, I believe, and they're far too low. So what we got to do is to cover the necessary maintenance and improvements. We also need to provide a revert, a good reserve fund for future needs and regulations. I mean, if you're looking at what we're doing, the well rehabilitation program, that's going to take a good maybe 50 to hundred thousand dollars a year to do it properly. They just put out a new New York state law on polyfluorinated chemicals, PFAS chemicals, that is costing the village a lot, of, a huge increase in sampling costs because that's the regulation we have to comply with. The lead and copper rule is starting next, in, ne over the next three years, the new federal lead and copper rule, that's going to increase the cost into exponentially of things the village is gonna have to do to comply with the lead and copper rule. Then there's UCMR5 that's out there now, which is the unregulated contaminant rule, which what it's doing is looking at other potential contaminants of interest and whether or not the EPA is going to make rules to treat them moving forward as well. So you, it's an ever evolving industry and the industry's moving forward is getting more and more and more regulated. So we're gonna need to have something to cover not only emergencies, but emerging rules and regulations as we go forward and have a reserve fund to take care of that and, and a healthy one at that. So what I'm thinking of, what I'm thinking we need to do as a village is get the hydrogeologist report and then do a rate study right after that to find out what the revenue requirement is going to be needed to cover all the expenses we need to do going forward. And that's, a, that's going to be a key component. We can do it relatively quickly once we get sort of the criticality of where we're investing from our consultants and what we can and can't do and over what time frame. And then you can start putting together, you know, sort of a value proposition to our rate payers where we can invest in this for this and you're going to have to, we'll give you the best value for your dollar, but we're going to, we're going to increase the water rate. The last piece of this that I'm, I'm going to call for right now, and, and I think we need to stop all building and stop all projects immediately. I think we need to put a building moratorium in for at least the next six to 12 months to allow the, our supply to stabilize and get our final strategies and rate strategies in place. Um, I'm asking for the rest of the board to join me in calling for that moratorium and, we, and to help stabilize our current water supply until it can be su sufficiently augmented to accommodate any additional growth. Um, it's not, what we have in place now is not ready for growth. It's just barely covering what we have now. I realize it's not a hugely unpopular idea at the moment, but it's absolutely necessary one to ensure continuity of supply for the future generations. It's not just us, it's not just me, it's not about I, it's about what we do for the future, our children, the next generation that are following us. We need to leave them in a better place than we started. And we need to leave them with a water supply that we can be proud of and not one that they're fighting for every drop. Um, the plant, you know, the planning process is already, you know, is already um, in our planning board process. They've changed some of the rule, the way they do things to kind of take this into consideration moving forward as well. So now we're asking for water and sewer demand projections for each item before our board. You know, an engineer is going to have to certify demand for each applicant and then that'll allow us once we get that mass balance of supply down to kind of balance what we're giving out for new projects and what we have available is what's called free board of supply. So those two things need to be balanced and we need to keep that a certain free board of supply there for emergencies going forward. So at least doing it this way, it'll give the village the ability to plan additions to infrastructure on a 10 to five to 10 year horizon down the road rather than trying to do it from behind, which is what we're doing now. So. I want to make sure we never get our what we're looking to do outstripped by the demand. We can't have what we have and then have it outstripped by what by what what's looking to be built. I'm fully for growth, and I think smart growth is a really good thing. But at this point, I can't I cannot as a water professional recommend that we allow any more until we get the water situation completely under control and have a supply pipeline, no pun intended, that is going to allow us to grow at a reasonable and sustainable rate. What we're trying to do is not sustainable. And I really think we need to, to stop everything and kind of put it in its tracks and put a pause. That's not permanent. I would just consider it a pause. So that's kind of where we are. And, you know, I tried to go through it as less technical as possible and as quickly as possible, but we have done over the last year, the, a lot of things that take some water purveyors a decade to do. And, we're doing them as fast as we possibly can. And this stuff doesn't happen overnight. You don't drill a well and then magically appear the next day. There's all kinds of permitting involved. There's all kinds of building involved. There's all kinds of planning, bidding, 
and, and, and the actual work itself. So each thing that you do takes a few months to get done. So you have to bear with us. We, are, we understand where it is. I'm really fully engaged with this. I'm fully engaged with what the water department needs to do. And uh, like I said, please treat those water, guy, water men and women with respect going forward. It's not, they are working really hard to keep you, to keep us into continuity of supply and keep it moving forward. We are going to make sure we have supply going to, in the future. And I want you to be confident in that. So that's what I have. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. That was great, Chris. Thanks for all of that great information. And I just want to take a minute to, for everybody that had a birthday since Chris got started to wish you a happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> And then we'll move on. That was great, Chris. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, I'll make it short because I think you took care of all of it. Um, Thank you all for joining us tonight. We had a few uh, days of very hot and humid days. If this is a preview of how the summer is going to be, and let's make sure that we look after our elderly neighborhood neighbors and those who might not have ACs at their home. A heat wave along with a drought can be dangerous just as dangerous as a winter storm. The heat can take a toll on our lives. Look at just what happened with the water restrictions that we had to place. So please have patience and help out in whatever way you can so we can keep one Woodbury, a beautiful community to keep living in. Good night, God bless, and stay safe. Thank you, Jesus. Trustee Burek. Uh, thank you everyone for watching this evening. Um, I wanted to provide um, an update on what the Combined Land Preservation and Comprehensive Plan Committees have been working on. Um, at this point, we have dissected the comprehensive plan and used the ranking system to determine which areas of the plan we should tackle first. Um, each mem member of the committee was to rate the level of importance of each section of the plan so we can come up with um, a pecking list. Um, it is no surprise to me that adopting an open space and natural resource plan has been ranked as priority number one by this committee um, and our plan as a village board is I hope to use the draft open space and natural resource plan from 2008, which was never adopted as our starting point. It is our goal to have an adopted finalized and updated plan as soon as possible so that we can finally begin making all of our environmental and conservation initiatives, even more of a cornerstone of everything that we do going forward. One of the suggestions from the committee uh, that was just mentioned at the meeting this week is to run an educational campaign highlighting what we learn as we go so that the entirety of the village's residents know what we know and understand what we're trying to accomplish and how we want to get there. We all lead very busy lives and it is so difficult to stay on top of everything going on and because there are so many moving parts um, one committee mentioned one committee member mentioned the other night that because there are so many moving parts that we as a committee have an obligation and responsibility to educate the residents. And I could not agree more. The idea is to release short pieces, whether in video or written, just raising awareness to certain areas of conservation and preservation that we're working on. We intend to keep these segments very short, sweet and to the point so that people are made aware and are kept informed throughout our process. Um, in light of Trustee Graziano's very comprehensive overview of the state of our water supply uh, and infrastructure, I believe the work on this committee is that much more critical. The village's open space and its natural resources, such as aquifers, have become increasingly threatened due to development amongst other factors. And as a result, public awareness of the importance of open space and natural resource preservation needs to continue to increase. This protection plan is designed to establish and continue to secure critical masses of open space and protecting stream corridors, wetlands, water bodies, aquifer recharge state areas, scenic vistas and other open spaces while determining how to protect the quality of life for the, the village's residents. The draft plan that uh, the village currently has, which is right in front of me that I use as my Bible, uh, was written 13 years ago in 2008. And uh, we cannot afford to put this off any longer because I believe that much of the reason we are in need of work today is because this effort was not given the intention and, and importance it deserved over the years. Um, but that has changed. Uh, the board has changed and we are here and with the committee working together, uh, we'll continue to make this a priority. And um, I hope that the rest of the board supports um, everything I said here. Um, a lot of the plan that I've read is eye-opening um, and things that we could be doing now to, to help. So uh, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you for entertaining my 
um, environmental initiatives, and uh, hopefully um, in the near future, we'll have something to present to the public. So thank you, everyone. Have a good night and stay well. Thank you, Tara. For the record, Craig Brady gave you a thumbs up. I don't know if you saw that or not. No, no, I'm, I'm, thank you, Craig. Gave you a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, Trustee Giacomazzo. You muted, bud. It's the Zoom national uh, greeting. Uh, once that's over with. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us this evening. On Sunday, June 20th, I'll be celebrating my 29th Father's Day, and it truly is the greatest gift I ever received. While preparing tonight's speech, I wanted to reflect on how I approach being a dad and my own father's influence on my life. I've always believed that a father's love for his children is never ending, and a good father is always there. It that it helps shape his children's early years and guide him through them through life. A good father is there to catch his infant with open arms when they take their first steps of life and stumble. He is there to educate them at the youngest age, even though they may not comprehend half of what he is saying. He is there to drop the child off <clears> on the first day of school, prepare them for their later educational years. Yes. Good father is there to guide their child through difficult teenage years and everything that comes in between. He is there to watch as the child graduates from college and becomes an adult. He is there to walk his baby girl down the aisle during their wedding, congratulate you on a job promotion, be there when you become a parent yourself. It is your dad's lifetime of guidance that hopefully molds you into the parent you will become. On a personal note, we are celebrating Father's Day and I have a million things to say about my own dad. I can go on and on about my father and we still wouldn't arrive at a conclusion. Over the years, my father has been extraordinary to me. I can proudly say with total conviction that he is more than just my father. He is my muse, my personal superhero, and my friend. He would always listen to my problems and offer solutions. He knows when I'm happy and he knows when I'm not. And I got bounced. And in the case of the latter, he puts a smile on my face faster than anyone in the entire universe. Being a father is not an easy task. It is a big responsibility, and I hope I have been a good father to my own children, just the way my father was a good to me. On a final note, I feel like the luckiest man in the world to have you as my father, and words alone can express how grateful I am for your priceless love and care and for being there for me all these years. Thank you, everyone, for your time, and I wish all my fellow dads throughout Woodbury a very happy Father's Day. and Have a good night. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, so, okay, so that's the board members. Let's move out to department heads. Uh, Desiree? Well, sometimes a good father can't be there when their daughter gets married. And for those of us whose fathers couldn't be there for various reasons, and mine couldn't because he passed away prior, um, but I still celebrate Father's Day and I think about him every day. So that's all I have to say. Okay. Uh, Mickey? I'm good, Tim. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Mickey. Uh, let's see. Chief Priscilla. No, all good, Tim. Uh, we don't have anything. Okay. Thanks, Pat. Uh, I know I saw Chief Burke on earlier, but I don't see his name anymore. So I will vote. No, we just got, we just had a call during it. He right. went to the call. We're back. Thank you. Rob Wyatt. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly thank everyone that came out for cleanup day and all the sponsors and participants. That's all. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Kelly, anything? Um, so first, Desiree, you almost just made me cry, as well as Andrew. But I don't think anybody's thanked Rob yet tonight. So I just <laughs> want to thank Rob just because. But no, uh, my on, on a serious note, my comments, I will... Um, I want to address the board in attorney client meeting. Yes, ma'am. And just full. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Kelly. Uh, I think I got all department heads, all board members. John Hen. Anybody? All right. So, with no further business, can I ask her? John Hand. Excuse me. Uh, John, ha John Hand is on. Hand. Oh, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. John Hand. Anything? Um, just that we're going to really miss Gary on his, after he retires. Uh, he's been invaluable to the community and he's passed on a lot of knowledge to uh, me and Alex and we're going to miss him. Thank you, John. And, you know, you just reminded me that uh, 
we don't have a meeting before Gary retires next week. So, oh, yeah. Congratulations, Gary, for all of your years of service, and thank you for everything that you've done for Woodbury. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? All right. With that said, can I have a motion and a second to adjourn? Go into attorney-client session. Trustee Wait, Thomas, with the motion. Trustee Giacomazza, <clears throat> excuse me, with the second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you and good night, everybody. Hopefully see you Saturday.